ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, and welcome back to yet another tutorial video where we are going to learn more about FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski, bringing you these tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video tutorial, we are taking a look at FileMaker date formats and date functions. These are things that you need to know if you're going to do anything with dates, times, and timestamps in FileMaker. Hey there, this is a quick little uh, pit stop just before we get into the deep end of this particular video. If you are already a FileMaker developer and you understand dates and times, how they're stored, the fact that they're stored as a number and you get all of that, this is going to be your information about jumping to the very end because at the very end, I give a just a super quick speed overview and you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. Otherwise, if you need to get all the details of dates and times, then watch the video. I cover as much as I can about everything dealing with dates, times, and timestamps. All right, so thanks for joining me, me on my desktop here. We've got the file that you are going to have access to. This is actually a free file, and it is a sample of the type of content you find over at FileMakerMagazine.com. So if you are interested in learning more about FileMaker, you'll find a lot more over at FileMakerMagazine.com. So we are taking a look at dates, times, and timestamps, and I'm going to tell you everything that I can that will help you on your journey with your FileMaker database with regards to using dates and timestamps. All right, very quickly, going into our Manage database, I have a couple of them here. I have a date, a time, and a timestamp. These are the three fields. Now, it's pretty easy. You already know this. This is basic. You simply create your field. You can switch it down here. There's other ways that you can create a FileMaker field as long as you're setting it to the right type. You're going to be able to capture what you want. Now, when do you want a date? When do you want a time? When do you want a timestamp? For most things, you want a timestamp because you're always able to extract the date or the time out of that timestamp. Although there are the situations where you want to use a date. Uh, that would be anything that's calendar based or time would be anything that is based on smaller you know, values of time, whatever happens within a 24 hour period. So let's cover the basics of a date and a timestamp so that you know what's going on. Now, when we first put our fields into FileMaker, like we have a date right here, what you should know is that FileMaker will allow you to enter a date in many different formats. I can enter it as uh, 12.23.21, although FileMaker suggests putting in the full year 2021, a full four year, you can put in just a two digit year and FileMaker will take that. Now, those dots, or dashes or slashes are all legitimate in terms of the value that you put in. Also, the order, depending on the language version of the file maker that you're working with, or actually it's the operating system I believe that you're working with, you can put this in the day, month, year, or you can put it in the uh, month, day, year, which is what I do here in the US. Now. What we see on screen is never what is actually not never, but oftentimes is not what is being stored. We always want to know that a date is actually a number that is stored. So as I change this to FileMaker's very first date, which I can put in one slash one slash zero 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 one, everything in FileMaker starts from this particular value. Now we can always see that by going up to the data viewer, which if you do not have your tools turned on, the script debugger, the uh, debugging controls, and the data viewer, which is what we're most interested in here, you can turn that on in FileMaker. As I go to the watch here, and I'm going to select some of these and get rid of them so that we can have a nice focused view, but go under your FileMaker preferences. Here on the Macintosh, we're going to find those right here. And in Windows, you're going to find them under the Edit menu, I believe down at the very bottom if you're on Windows. And we want to use this option right here, Use Advanced Tools, if you're using a copy of FileMaker that does not have that turned on. And in previous, prior to FileMaker 17, I believe, um, you actually had a separate copy of FileMaker, FileMaker Pro Advanced versus FileMaker Pro. But they combined both of those. It was either 17 or 18, don't quote me on that. But Here's what we are looking at. I'm going to add a new watch variable right here by clicking the plus. Let's make this a little bit smaller so that we can see what is going on. 
and I am simply going to reference that date field. Now FileMaker will return the date field as what we have displayed. So in other words, if I go ahead and click OK on this, monitor, and go into this field, and let's change it to dashes right here. So I'm going to change those from slashes to dashes so that we can see what's going on. When we go in and we take a look at that result, look at that. FileMaker is returning exactly what we have in terms of the format. Now, the format is just what FileMaker is applying to the date. Internally, what is stored is something totally different. We are going to do this, get as number, and we're going to paste in that date. Now, it doesn't matter what the date is, but internally, this is what FileMaker is storing. Now, remember, we put in 110001. So that is when FileMaker starts keeping track of time from. So we go in and we put in get current date, and we put that extra colon. There we go. This is the number of days since this time. There has been 73,000, or uh, 738, thousand one hundred and fifty one days that's the day that we're on right now and if I took the get as number off on here this is the day that I'm recording this video 12 27 01 so it doesn't matter what you have as a date if you want to know how FileMaker is storing it you can always use the get as number and then you can put in whatever date you want with the date function itself which simply just takes a month a year and whatever so if I put in uh, three 22, uh, 19, I don't know, 54. That is the number right there. Now, knowing this, we can always do some, you know, whatever our calculations are, our differences are based on the fact that day, the date function is based on days. Now, the same thing works with time. If we put time in here, and I put a time value and I put hours, minutes, and seconds. Now, everything in time is based on a 24-hour clock. So if you're not familiar with military time, then putting 12 and then expecting a PM doesn't really work. With our time functions in FileMaker, we're going to need to go to that 24-hour time. So after 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it becomes 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 23. Now, we don't go to 24 because 24 is essentially when we roll over and that's when it becomes zero. So 12 midnight would be this right here. And we've got zero, zero, zero. So how many total seconds are there in a 24 hour period? Well, that's going to be if we put in 23 and then we put in 59 and then we put 59, we can see that we get 86,000 seconds and this would become 400. So there are a total of eight, uh, 86,400 seconds within a, uh, within a day. So what that means is that date is equal to working with days, and then time is equal to working with seconds. So there's a very key lesson right here. You may be thinking, why is he explaining these things? Why are they so basic that he's explaining them? Because some of these things are not understood by people who start using FileMaker, and they don't understand that what FileMaker has done is in the term of a date, it's using the lowest value that it can in order to track time, and that is days. When it comes to time, the second lowest, or the, the next method of tracking time, you're still going to use the lowest value, which is seconds. So that means nothing happens in terms of months or in terms of hours or in terms of um, minutes. All of these values have to be broken down in terms of what they equate to in the measurement system that the date uses. So in terms of months, you're going to have to have how many days are in the month. In terms of hours, you'll have to know how many seconds are in an hour, which is equal to 3,600, which is really good to know. And then in terms of this, you've got 60. So knowing these values, you really need to know them because if we don't pay attention to the fact that time breaks down into seconds, and that means that if we want an hour and we're using a time function, we have to have 3,600. 
then it makes everything a lot more difficult. Just remember you're working pretty much with days, incremental by one, and seconds, incremental by one, up until uh, the full amount, the 8600. So now that we've got those fundamentals down, we can take a look at what FileMaker does in terms of formatting and get basically dates to look exactly how we want. All right, so let's talk about formatting our dates. In terms of FileMaker, we know that underneath the hood now, everything is stored as a raw number. But that does not mean that we should not apply formatting ourselves, or we can get the format of a date or a time however we want. Now, we'll take a look quickly at what FileMaker gives us in terms of the formatting options. But before we do that, I want to show you something that's very important. If you allow users the ability to input uh, dates and times arbitrarily, and by arbitrarily, I mean I'm able to put in 12, 23, uh, 21, and have FileMaker take that. It, it, it sees perfectly fine. It interprets that date. But if I enter this date this way, and then the next user that comes in after me does this, where they do .17.21, FileMaker is still going to interpret that. We can see right here it's getting it December 17th. That's just fine. But the problem is this is what I would consider dirty or messy data. I don't have all of my dates in a, consi a consistent format, or my times for that matter. If I come in and I can put in, let's say, 1321, uh, I know that that's going to be 121 when formatted as a PM versus uh, AM type of thing, but I can put in even numbers that don't necessarily make sense and FileMaker will still take them. So for example, if I want to put in 25, which exceeds the period of 24, which should be actually if I wanted 12, would be 021 for 12 at midnight, 1221, well, that would be, uh, yeah, 1221 would be, you get the idea. We'll just, we'll put in the 25. You can see that FileMaker still says, Oh, okay, I'll take I'll take 25. So when it comes to time, remember that time can be used in two different ways. It can be used in terms of accumulating time, meaning it can go beyond 24 hours, but it can also represent time that stays within the 24 hours. So FileMaker is going to have to simply calculate up. If it hits right there at uh, 235959 and you go to 24 and then to 25, it's going to take the hour and add that hour to what would be a 24-hour period, and it just keeps cycling over and over again. So if you're using a time field to track values, you're probably not going to want to format it as a uh, time that fits within the time that we use in order to track our, our days and regular time. So you have to remember that. I mean, and it'll take anything. I could put in 31, 21, uh, 12, which could represent a, a particular activity it took 31 hours, 21 minutes, and 12 seconds. But yet, if rendered, FileMaker will format that as a proper time. But this, for the most part, this wouldn't work in terms of uh, like date-based time or a calendar-based time. I hope you get the idea. So we want to apply some rigid standards many times with our dates and times, which we're going to go into Manage Database, and I'll just do it on the dates, but you can do it on time as well. So in the Date field, when I double-click this and we go to the Auto Enter, we can select to Auto Enter a calculated value. Now you can see what I have already in here. I'd previously put this and FileMaker remembered it. I have applied a date function to the value that is actually entered. Now the value that is entered comes from the self function. If you have not used it, it is absolutely wonderful when you want to apply a rigid structure or a rigid format to a particular value, in this case, date formats. So by applying a month, a day, and a year within that date, what is going to happen, and what we also want to check is we want to uncheck this option, do not replace existing, because that means any time that the user makes a change to that date value, what's going to happen is no matter how janky the user puts the date value in, such as 12.17, I'll just back this off and let's use that right there. We can see right here FileMaker is uh, going to be get confused. So it's going to tell me, I don't even understand. You started with the dash, now you're using the period. 
Um, we'll say, okay, let's go back. We'll use something consistent, two periods. FileMaker will accept it, but what it did is it applied its formatting, which in this case uses the slashes. So you can see that no matter what, if I put in the dashes here, I think even if I give it an extra space, nope, it won't come at, it needs to have those uh, right in the right format, but as long as it's in the right format, you are applying the structure that you want to this particular uh, field. So that's the first thing that I would do, is if you know that you want your dates to be input correctly, users can put anything in, you're going to for force the date result to be proper and correct. Uh, same thing with time and same thing with timestamps. Now with timestamps, we simply just have the combination of the date with the time. I don't think anything needs to be said right there, but we can format the dates however we want. So the first step is we apply our own formatting if we want to ensure a rigid uh, value, and we do that on the auto enter referencing the self that's on, that is the value that the user enters. Beyond that, we go into layout mode and then we have everything within the data tab. So we'll scroll this over here. Actually, we'll select this one because it is formatted. We go to the fourth area, the data tab right here. We'll close everything down right here and it's down at the bottom. It is right here. It is data formatting. Now from here, what you're going to notice is something interesting. I've got my date, my time, and a timestamp. Watch what happens when I select date, and date is the only one that appears. Time, time, and general for some reason appears, and timestamp. We've got the time, the date, and general appears. Now, I don't understand what the logic is for this first tab actually showing up, but we can see right here with the date, we have all of our different options. If you just want the system, you can take whatever the system uses, short or long. Um, a lot of the times that's just easiest to do if you're building a solution that's going to be used in multiple different locales. Otherwise, you can always strictly enforce whatever date formatting you want. If you want it in reverse where you want year, month, day, you can do that. And I do that a lot on uh, code when I'm looking at things as a developer. Now, when it comes to our timestamp, we again have all of our formatting. I don't think I need to go through this. You can figure a lot of these things out, whether you want to see things as 24 or whether you want to uh, have them be 12 hour. One thing I will mention, if you are applying an auto enter, like I showed you on the date field, and you do that on timestamps, by default, those values will become 24 hour, which means you can still display them in 12 hour, but I love having times stored in FileMaker as their actual values, as the uh, 24 hour time, or um, you know where it converts anything past 12 to 13, 14, et cetera. Makes it a lot more easy to understand as a developer. And timestamp, finally we have uh, just both of the options. In fact, what happens with a timestamp is when you apply formatting to one of the two parts, the date, but let's say you did not apply it to the uh, to this one. So this timestamp right here, if I left the time portion as entered, but the date I applied a format, I don't believe the timestamp formats um, properly. I'd have to play with it. But one thing I have noticed is that you typically want to have both, uh, both parts specified for a timestamp. So for a timestamp, I would definitely want to do um, hours, minutes, seconds, or hours, minutes if I don't want to show that, and then choose all the rest of my options that I have right here. And then uh, with regards to why the general shows up, I've never had the opportunity to have a reason to set part of this when it comes to date and time. Maybe it's just this decimal value right here. Although that doesn't, that might make sense with uh, UTC time, but I don't know. We'll take a look at that because that's one of the things that we're going to talk about next. All right, so we cannot talk about dates and times in FileMaker unless you understand some fundamentals of what's going on in your database and in general in the world. So I've gone to one of the more popular websites here that deals with times, time zones, and uh, understanding dates and times and formatting, things like that. So time and date is a great place to go to. And as I go to the time zone map, this is critical for you to understand. And I'm going to be showing you the functions that you can use in FileMaker to get the values you need based on a couple of different things with regards to when we're using FileMaker. 
So if you don't already know, as I zoom in here, pretty much everything is based off of one single place. I believe it's in the UK. In fact, I know it's in the UK because I went and visited it. Um, it used to be called GMT or Greenwich Mean Time. It's now called UTC or Universal Coordinated Time. I don't know. I'd have to look that up in terms of what it what UTC stands for. Look that up or I'll put it down below here. I just... I'm blanking for some reason, but it starts right here. And then obviously it spans out in both directions. So you have negatives and you have positives. And these are just time offsets, meaning where is it in relation to, uh, you know, where am I in relation to what is used for absolute tracking? So when, when I say absolute tracking, most computer based systems are going to track things based on a, there has to be some standard, some absolute that is universal to everything else because everything else is relative. So UTC in terms of a timestamp is what is used in most computing systems. So if you're going to have a FileMaker system that's ever going to be used in multiple time zones, which is the case because we are in a global economy these days, then you must do everything according to UTC. Or you, I shouldn't say you have to, but we're going to take a look at how this factors into your FileMaker database. So as I hide this, we have in FileMaker this function right here, get current time UTC milliseconds. Now, this particular time uh, function is very useful. You can see just like the date and just like time, it is an absolute number. In fact, if I go in here and I take this off and I uh, reevaluate this, we can see that that value just changed. What this is doing is, is taking the date and time, but also adding on fractions of seconds or thousandths of seconds, milliseconds, as they say. So what we can do is we can use this value because this value is based on that absolute. It's based on UTC. Now, when we get our time, let's go back over to that map and talk about this really quickly. So in FileMaker, get UTC milliseconds is based on this time. My particular time as of right now is in Eastern time. And then we have daylight shifting the whole, you know, switch an hour, what have you. So there's three times that I need to be aware of. One is the absolute, which is UTC time. The next is my local time, which in my particular case, as I zoom in right here, let's zoom in a little bit better. There we go. My particular case is I am at negative five, but then where my server is hosted also matters. So let's say I have a server hosted in West Coast, which is actually at negative eight, and I hope I'm not blocking it there. So I have three different times that might be relevant to my FileMaker system. So in FileMaker, for the most case, you're typically going to put in like something like a modified time. Uh, and let's actually make it a, a timestamp because like I said, most of the time you're making things a, a timestamp. We switch that to a timestamp. We say change, say okay. We double click. We say we want the modification timestamp, the date and time. Now this particular value is local to me. So in the example that I just gave you, this timestamp is relative to UTC. I am at negative five. Well, my server also has a timestamp of when things happen. So if you are working with users in multiple time zones, you need something that is absolute. Now there's two ways that you can go about this. You can use the get UTC milliseconds and actually capture that as a particular timestamp. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. You could put in here a modified UTC if you wanted to. That could be a timestamp and it actually could be a calculated value. We'll go ahead and click our options. We can go in here for auto enter. We could get uh, calculate it, uh, calculated. We could say get uh, UTC milliseconds. It's right there. And then we just say OK on that. And uh, in this case, this is going to actually capture from the creation time. Now, if we wanted this to be a modification based on UTC, we would uncheck this right here, but we need to have something that will trigger it. 
Um, and whether or not you do this is, tr is purely based on your computing system, your FileMaker database, and whether your database is going to communicate outside of it communicating to other systems. And most of the time when you're communicating with other systems, you do need to use UTC. Your local time won't work, but you can convert that using the custom functions that I have in this file. So remember, if you want the UTC, in this case modified, I would have to uncheck this right here and I would have to tie this based on something else. So if I wanted to tie this, I could do this based on this, watch this. A FileMaker uh, auto enter function will trigger based on anything else that is referenced. So if I actually just do this, let, and then if I said something like uh, trigger equal, and then I say the modified timestamp, but the result of this let function is a UTC milliseconds, essentially what happens is every time that this record is now modified, I'm getting the modified local timestamp, but I'm also getting a modified UTC timestamp. So that means that if I'm going out to an external system and they need a universal coordinated time in a JavaScript format, which we will take a look at here coming up, then I have that UTC format in my FileMaker database. Also within this, remember, you can also do this. FileMaker gives you an alternative of get current current host timestamp, and it's right there. So depending on the needs of your system, you might need UTC uh, time, you might need your local time, but you also might need the server time. So it really depends on your system in terms of what timestamps you actually need, but it doesn't matter right here. I could swap this get UTC milliseconds out for the host timestamp. This would get where my server is. I would know what my local time is. I could calculate the difference between those two times and do whatever I need to do. So we'll go ahead and uh, say okay to this. So what we need to take a look at now is what are the functions that we have access to that allows us to work with these more advanced variations of time, UTC, the time zone offset, and so forth. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the custom functions. Now that we understand that time is tracked in different locations, and it's all based on our system, and FileMaker stores, thing, stores things as a number, either days or seconds, or the combination of days and seconds, or days and seconds plus milliseconds, which is the get UTC milliseconds, we can use these values to drive or get times, relationships, whatever it is that we want to get out of FileMaker, we can do that. That comes in the form of all of the values that I have right here. We can take a look at some of them. For example, we've got ISO from date. So if we supply a date, there is a format where it goes uh, year, month, day, reverse. Then we also have the time, which is going to be in 24 hour time with the seconds. And then here is a UTC or a, um, an ISO timestamp. Now this becomes extremely valuable to any type of situation where you are working outside of FileMaker with what's called an API. So these application programming interfaces, you will in most cases be dealing with JavaScript and JavaScript uses this ISO uh, timestamp. You can also see that we have in here a UTC offset. We can see that I am currently at negative five, just like we saw on the map. This is calculated by a custom function. You can also see that we've got the UTC milliseconds, but we also have the local timestamp of the get UTC milliseconds. So if you need the UTC time, but you need it relative to your local time, then you can drive that as well. So those functions we're going to find in the custom functions. So I've opened up the custom functions and we'll take a look at them here. I'll explain uh, some of them, highlight them, and then others we will try to um, not, so this one doesn't count. Um, I'll show you the ones that do. So these where we've got ISO from date, from time, and from timestamp. These are all things that take a raw FileMaker value and convert it into the format that we're typically going to use in JavaScript. It's not specific just to JavaScript because ISO can be used within any computing system, but JavaScript is the most common language we're going to use within FileMaker. 
Now, if you need the opposite of those, we have a time from ISO, a timestamp from ISO, and a date from ISO. So these six functions that we have right here, and I'll select them as well, these are all written by Jeremy Bonte, and what they do is they allow you to take dates in and out of JavaScript, and that is something that we are going to be doing in FileMaker if you're going to be doing anything with an API, and they are all provided for you in this file. Now, when it comes to time zones, you saw that we have UTC offset and uh, local timestamp. Now, these two functions simply allow you to find out, given the local time, what is the offset relative to that UTC timestamp, that absolute that we have over there in the UK. So we need these in some cases when we're going to be doing some date time math or logic. For the rest of the functions that we have in here, age, business days, business holidays, um, date difference, a very valuable custom function, um, uh, day name short, which is simply just going to take uh, this particular function says, you know, I want you to take whatever the day of the week is. And again, a lot of these were um, just formatted by Jeremy Bonte. Some of them existed before him, but for the most part, he did a lot of formatting in his rep his uh, GitHub repository is very clean in terms of a lot of the date time uh, functions. So this one just takes the short versions. If you're in another language, you're of course going to convert these to whatever uh, fits your locale. Then as we go down, we've got future date. Sometimes you want to know what is um, a, a date in the future, and we'll look at that here quickly. And then finally, we've got some others. We've got weekdays and a few other helper functions. Now we can see these in this file when we scroll down and we take a look at them in this database. Now in this database, the only thing I did is I simply put a field in here, and we, if we go into layout mode, we can see that the name of this field is called evaluate. Now, the result field, which we have right over here, is simply going to evaluate whatever is in evaluate. So if we go over into our manage database, we go to our result field, you can see that the result is simply evaluating whatever is in the evaluate field. This is just an easy way in order to test out some functions that you have, and just create records in order to play with them. So one of the biggest things that people want when it comes to a um, database is they want to calculate an age. This is probably one of the best, uh, the better custom functions that I've found because it does deal with leap years and you don't have, uh, sometimes you have really weird um, edge cases as they call them. And this one really is spot on. Um, I forget where it came from. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I, there might be credit in there. Um, there is not, unfortunately. Um, I think I picked this up uh, on a couple of different places or it's a combination of a few. Let's just take a look at that. First, we're going to get the current date because every age is relative to the current uh, date. Then we've been going to get the birth date. Remember that when a birthday comes in, it can come in as FileMaker as something that um, is text, um, depending on how the user is formatted. So by coercing this value into a date, we know that this is a date. We have forced this into a date. So we are going to be working with two different date values. There's an adjustment value because a birthday hasn't happened until that day has actually occurred. So we say as long as today is less than the date of the birth date, the day of the birth date, but the year, note that this is this day, uh, month, and day all, all hinge off of birth date, yet the year hinges off of today. So in other words, uh, given the current year, it has to, ha uh, the birth date has to have past that current month. So by using that adjust, we can simply take the year of today, subtract the year of the birth date, and then simply adjust it based on that current year. And that's where this one is the best. The rest of it, FileMaker takes care of, and that's the best way that I've seen to get an age. Now the next function is extremely valuable. This one right here, this one was created by somebody who was in the FileMaker community for a long time. Unfortunately, his, he has now passed on. Um, brilliant, brilliant gentleman uh, provided a tool called FMDiff. And this 
one custom function can be used for all kinds of things. It was by Winfried uh, Huslick, and he was from Germany. Um, he did this all the way in 2006. Just because code uh, code is old does not mean it is not useful. This, I'm not going to go through it in terms of what it's doing logically. You can sit there and uh, take uh, the time. The key to this particular function is its utility in the fact that it will take any two dates. In fact, you can use this just like I you do with the age function in order to determine age and the great thing about this function is it allows you to pull out any individual piece that you need using the get value. Now, FileMaker does this in some of their own functions, and this is what's brilliant about this. The date difference function will allow you to take a starting date and a current date. So in this case, what we're doing is we're actually saying we're, we want a birthday, but we want to know exactly how much time has transpired since that birth date. So if the, if the person was born in 1126 on 1946, and that's relative to the current date, we know that that's 75 years old, zero months, and 27 days. Now what's great about this is you get to use the get value uh, function. So if you have not seen it, get value is going to allow you to take some type of input and then specify which value you want. So if I wanted value four, from an input of whatever date difference returns, and it's not going to take this in my field, by the way, then I would be able to grab this bottom string of 75 years, zero months, and 27 days. And of course, you can modify the custom function to fit your needs, but I can also take the individual pieces. Get value one will get the 75, get value two would get the zero, and get value three would get the 27. So we'll revert that field right there. And that is probably, in terms of a lot of the date math that you need to do between two dates, that one function, date difference, that will do it for you. And I, by the way, called it date difference. Now, future date is going to take a future day on the same day in the, the future, um, in this particular one. We've got uh, 12, 21, tw uh, 2021, 1, 8. You can see that it's returning 1, 4, 2022. Why is that? Because the future date function is saying, I'm providing you with, let's say, a Wednesday, or I'm providing you with a Friday. I'm providing with you a Friday. Um, in this case, I don't know what it is. I'd have to open a calendar, but uh, let's say that it's a Wednesday. So if 1221, uh, 122021, actually, let's, uh, let's bring up, I've got a thing right here. 1221, it is a Tuesday. So in this particular case, what we have is we're saying we want to know what is the future date in January given this week that includes 1-8. And if we switch over to January right here, we can see that 1-8, the future date of a Tuesday is going to be 1-4. And that's what future date is actually returning. There are times where you want to know, um, I want a future date and it needs to be on this same day. I should say this actually should be future day uh, in terms of the name of this function because you want that day. I've got, I'm giving you a Tuesday. I want a Tuesday in the future given this date and then it will find it. So this is either going to backtrack or it's going to go forward depending on what your needs are. Next one, we've got a total months elapsed. So maybe you just need to co calculate the total number of months. Here again, what are we going to use? Date difference. What is date difference going to do? It's going to break down all of the individual parts if we have a total number of years. So in this case, we're saying we're, give, we're giving it a date of 2017 and we're going up to 2024. Well, all we're going to do is use our get values and we're going to get those values and simply just modify them. So on our years, we're going to multiply it times 12. That gives us our total months. We're going to add the value of uh, the second one, which is months, and we get the total number of months. So if you need to calculate a wide range of months, date difference is going to be your friend. Next one, date of a month. So in this particular one, it is allowing you to supply, I want the third Tuesday of a given month. So date of month. If I want the uh, third, uh, let's say third Tuesday, Tuesday of a given date, the third Tuesday is uh, 2021. So we go look at that in the month of 12 
And the third Tuesday, 1, 2, and 3 is 21. If we wanted a Friday, let's put in a Friday and we put in the second. So in this case, we're using an ordinal. I want the second Friday provided this date. We calculate it out, 12, 10. We go look at our uh, calendar and under Friday, one and then two, that is our second value. So with these functions, there's very little that you probably can't do. You will be able to calculate whatever value you need. And if it, these functions aren't calculating the value you need, then knowing how the date and time functions work in order to get the value that you need is something that is pretty easy to do now that I've given you all of the information. So I hope throughout the course of this video, you've been able to get a good, strong sense of date formats and the date functions. If you have spent the time watching this video, I know it's been a long one. You are well, well ahead of all of the other people who are fumbling around trying to figure out how to get out of their database what they need to get. I guess the last thing that I'll leave you with here is when you are creating relationships based on dates and times, which let's go ahead and create a new one here. Let's say we are going based on, we'll drag an ID field here, but we'll go to a date field. Not a relationship that makes sense, but we're just doing it here. In most all date time situations, when you're specifying a range, you're almost always going to be using these two values right here, the greater than, less than, or the less than, both of them. It's the one with the line underneath it because you're typically wanting to go inclusive of the date. So you're going to specify your start time, your end time, you're going to target your date value or your date field, and you're going to be using the greater than uh, and equal to or less than and equal to, whichever one those are, I forget. Uh, left is the less than and right is the greater than in terms of the way that the arrows face. But that is, for the most part, going to give you the ability to extract things out of your database with uh, dates and times using relationships and pretty much get exactly the results that you need with date formats and date these date functions. So until next time, much luck to you and happy file making. All right, here we go. This is the shortened version of this extremely long video about dates and times. I always want to provide users with as much knowledge and information as possible, but you probably already know about dates and times. FileMaker stores all dates as an incrementing number going all the way back to year one, uh, day one, month one of year one. Uh, Timestamps, everything is revolving. It's all based on seconds, based on um, your 24-hour clock. But of course, if you're storing anything higher than a particular value, FileMaker will take that time stored as a um, just whatever it represents. You have hours beyond 24 hours um, and you cannot have you know minutes beyond 59 or seconds beyond 59 but you probably know that all right in this file i have a number of custom functions they break down as follows as we zoom in here we have all of our conversion functions our iso and the companion ones are date from iso time from iso and timestamp from iso of course these are iso 8601 you need these whenever you're dealing with JavaScript and you're inside of FileMaker. Moving on from that, we have a convenience function, which is simply going to calcul calculate your age. It's super simple. It simply is going to take the year of the uh, intended uh, month uh, or the intended date, and then it takes the current date year. So you can see right here, we're taking that year and that year. And of course, when it comes to a birth date, a birth date within the current year doesn't actually happen unless that particular month has, uh, has passed. And so we're using an adjust right here where we're saying the date of the birth date, the year on that on today with the month and day has to be greater than today. And we're going to use that as an adjustment value. So then we move on to we've got um, convenience business days, business holidays. These, again, are uh, from Jeremy Bonte's repo. Super helpful if you need to calculate business dates. Um, and then we have super useful function. I've used it for years. Date difference from Winfred. Unfortunately, Winfred has passed away. So um, this video, to your memory, Winfred, um, absolutely brilliant, awesome. I've used this forever, and it does everything bang on. What makes this so uh, super useful is when you look at it, 
it gives it you it gives you all of the individual parts which you use get value for so if you need the get value years you get value one get value two for months get value three for days otherwise get value four will give you the full string you of course can use these in order to do whether date whatever date math you need Next one we've got is um, we've got a day name short. All that does is it simply converts um, whatever the day of week returns and chops it down by three. So you've got Mon uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Helpful if you're going to be doing anything internationally. You just have to change that month name. Um, these do not apply right here. Future date simply just says if you're going to give me a Tuesday within this month, then I'm going to give you a Tuesday provided a future date. And that uh, Tuesday is going to just back roll to whatever the day is. So future date, I actually should name, I mentioned it in the video, I should name it uh, future day. Um, local timestamp is going to take an input UTC timestamp. So that's our get UTC milliseconds. And it will actually apply the UTC offset of whatever the local time is. Of course, we've got the UTC offset, which is going to give you your uh, value, whether you're positive or negative of UTC. And if you're a developer and you're watching this part of the video, then you already know what UTC means to you. Uh, week days is going to tell you me, uh, tell me how many days in the week there are of a start and end date. This one doesn't apply. And I think I covered them all. And this is the super short version of what this is. This is pretty much a collection of all the date, uh, date time format functions that I've used that I really don't know that there's many more that I need to use because this gives me everything and I'm able to calculate whatever I need. So hope the short version has helped you uh, out. Of course, you've got the uh, technique file. You can dig into it and uh, take it apart. All right, until the next video. See you guys, bye. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.